has highlighted the difficulties of reporting from Gaza. The lack of foreign journalists on the ground means that news outlets are reliant on information that comes from the Hamas-controlled health ministry. My, my next guest met with Hamas officials regularly during her two decades as a journalist covering the conflict. Elaine Prussia now teaches at Florida Atlantic University. She's the digital director of Media Lab at FAU and she joins us now. Elena, thank you very much uh, for being with us. Um, and as I said in the introduction there, you did meet with Hamas officials on numerous occasions. What did those meetings, uh, those encounters tell you about the terrorist group and its intentions? Well, the focus of uh, a piece I recently wrote for CNN Opinion was focused on talking about those meetings and the extent to which I think Hamas officials um, successfully uh, would try to present themselves as kind of logical, maybe more moderate than you think, more relatable than you would think. Um, they would say things to us in interviews like, well, we don't really know when uh, you know an operation, as they call it, uh, is going to happen. Um, and you know, there was a portrayal of a political Political wing versus a military wing, as if uh, they were almost independent of each other. Which I think, in the fullness of time, uh, it becomes apparent that that probably was never fully true. But that was one of the things that they would, uh, you know, often explain to us. Um, and you know, they would talk sometimes about, well, we would consider a long-term hudna or truce with Israel. Um, and you know, I, I think that they were um, pretty adept, actually, at speaking to foreign media um, to, you know try to uh, you know present a, a good face for Hamas when people would come to visit Gaza, including myself for many years. And, and what about reporting on, on the current uh, conflict then? Because when it comes to death toll figures, for example, um, especially the number of civilians who have been killed, uh, you know, can journalists trust the figures that are coming out of Gaza? Well, it's really hard to uh, to verify figures. I think even for Palestinian journalists, I, I I keep in touch with a few of them who I've worked with over the years in Gaza. I think it's it's really impossible to verify. I mean, that said, you know, there, there's very clearly uh, you know uh, a very high death toll, a lot of uh, death and destruction happening in Gaza. Um, but uh, in order to actually go and verify numbers, I mean, you'd have to go to visit you know separate hospitals. Uh, it, it is difficult to know what the numbers are. Are. I mean, I'm, I'm saying this, of course, and I'm I'm living in the U.S. now. Um, but you know, we've we've seen some cases where you know the the death toll figures were just you know very kind of round numbers, ballpark figures, um, and it would become very difficult to actually know if those numbers were accurate. And I'm talking historically on uh, the last big war I reported on when I was based in Israel, which was 2014. Um, you know, there there were there were. Gross, sometimes gross estimates, to be honest. You know, sometimes they said, oh, most of the people Israel killed were civilians. And then a year later saying, oh, no, actually, we lost hundreds of fighters when they, you know, speaking to, uh, you know, an Arabic media outlet a year later. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot of, um, you know, skewing of the figures sometimes, uh, you know, which again isn't to say that there aren't, you know, actually, you know, real people dying, including civilians. Um, but, you know, it, it's impossible for anybody, certainly the foreign media, but also. So I think the Palestinian media as well to verify uh, the numbers or any real information that Hamas gives out. And, and do you think that foreign news outlets then are, are making it clear enough that they are uh, counting on depending on Hamas information? Well, I think some are. Uh, I, I do kind of keep a close eye on that. And I noticed that some will say, um, you know, the Hamas run Ministry of Health and that these numbers could not be independently verified. Uh, but other times it just says, you know, the Gaza Health Ministry. Um, so, you know, does the average reader or viewer, uh, you know, know about, you know, the you know, the problematic nature of the information that you're getting. I can't say for certain. Uh, I would say that um, I think media should be maybe more careful about, you know, repeating that for the viewer or listener or reader uh, that numbers could not be verified. Um, we've had more and more Palestinian civilians lately um, criticizing Hamas on uh, Arabic language media. Um, did you encounter any Gazans who were willing to, to criticize Hamas when you spoke to them? I mean, how difficult is it for ordinary Palestinians? Palestinians to speak out. I would say over the years, for sure, there were a lot of people who were critical of Hamas. Um, 
Most of the time, if they were critical, they did not want to be quoted by name. Um, you know, there were a very select few people who were prominent, uh, who maybe would, um, you know, would say things that would be, you know, slightly critical or, you know, what Hamas really needs to do now is think about, you know, the people of Gaza as opposed to, you know, the next attack. Um, so it was it was often, um, you know, very delicately worded if it was connected to somebody's actual name. There are a lot of things that you can find, you know, off the the record, you might know there's a new video series now called Whispered in Gaza, where you can learn about what, what people are saying. Uh, another thing I reported on extensively, I know this is going back a few years, but um, in 2007, when Hamas took over Gaza um, and drove out Fatah, um, a lot of those people escaped, many of them severely injured to the West Bank. And I interviewed a lot of those people about what it was like living under Hamas. So I think there is some criticism. Uh, you know, there is, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, when people feel, you know, themselves, uh, you know, under siege, they will kind of, you know, rally around, you know, the flag or whoever seems to be in charge. So, uh, you know, I'm also seeing polls that say, you know, Hamas is more popular uh, than it was. So it, it can be really difficult well, it, to tell because we say, oh, okay, the poll says more Palestinians support Hamas than ever. But does the average Palestinian trust when someone calls them on their cell phone and mm -hmm. says we're doing a poll? Uh, you might think, well, I don't know who this pollster is. I don't know if I can trust them. And that's how most polling is done these days. Um, so, you know, maybe you're going to give an answer that you think Hamas would want to hear because you're not sure you can trust the person at the other end of the line. Um, so I think even polling to try to say we have a real finger on the pulse of what average Gazans think right now um, is, is really problematic and difficult to get a true reading on that. Well, yeah, it's interesting because um, polls also, if you break them down, um, currently show more support for Hamas in the West Bank than in Gaza from the people who have lived under Hamas for 17 years. So I think that's a, an interesting difference as well. But uh, just going back to what we were saying at the beginning and about how the group tries to present itself. I mean, how interested, how is important is it to Hamas, uh, how they are viewed um, internationally, but especially in the Arab world? Well, I think the fact that, you know, the October 7th attack uh, was committed with a lot of GoPros on, uh, you know, the heads of the people who committed it showed that they really wanted to document it and share it. Um, and I think, um, you know, some of us, you know, might find that footage, you know, not only horrifying, but also kind of documenting crimes. I think for them, it was showing we're, we're doing something. We did this attack. We succeeded in doing it. Um, and, you know, for some people in the Arab world, it might be sh showing uh, uh, you know, and, and certainly for some Palestinians, uh, you know, that this kind of revival of resistance that they uh, haven't seen in a long time. Uh, many of them feel, you know, disappointed in the leadership of uh, the Palestinian Authority under Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen. So, you know, there there's some degree of, okay, you know, People across the world were not even talking about the Palestinian issue uh, two months ago, and now it's on the front pages every day. So from their point of view, uh, it, it might be viewed as a success. But I, I, I do think that the strategy with dealing with the foreign media has been slightly different for many years. Um, and, you know, there, the, the, what I wrote about in the, in the piece that I just published, um, there are uh, a number of people who are, uh, you know, very capable of communicating in English uh, about, you know, their uh, their grievances and their reasons for doing what they're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's quite interesting because it's it's often not the same message that you'll uh, see or hear in the Arabic media. Well, great to talk to you, uh, Elaine. Thank you very much indeed. Elaine Prasha there. Thank you.